Hello and welcome to St Matthew's Sunday Worship. My name is Ian and I'm the Vicar of St Matthew's and it's a real joy for me to be joining with you in worship online today. Just a couple of uh, church notices, uh, just to flag up that St Matthew's will be starting an Alpha course again um, in September, September the 22nd. Uh, Alpha is the opportunity over a series of weeks, um, evenings, Wednesday evenings, where we can meet together. There's a really great talk to provoke our thoughts and then it's a safe environment in which anyone can ask any question they like about God, the universe, life, in a safe environment where you won't be challenged um, and you can just ask those difficult big questions that we all have. So think about that for yourself and for others. Secondly, just to say that we continue to think about and pray for Afghanistan and the horrific situation happening there. And please do give to the aid agencies that are supporting refugees and others if you can. St Matthew's has some information on that which has been sent to church members. Please give generously. And thirdly, just to say that uh, we are beginning a series on Mark's Gospel today. Before Christmas we'll be looking at Mark's Gospel chapters 1 to 8 uh, where Jesus reveals who he is. Uh, and uh, we look forward to that series over the coming weeks. So a prayer before we have our first song of praise. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the many blessings that you've already given us. Help us, Heavenly Father, in whatever our situation is, one of joy of one, or one of struggle, to know by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit your never-ending eternal love for us. Amen. And so now we have our first hymn of praise, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the
to reflect on the sacrifice of God for us and uh, the transformation that it can mean to each and every one of us to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. We're now going to have an opportunity to think about for a few moments the past week, the joy of that cross of Christ on which Christ died and from which he rose again for us. It means that you and I can have a fresh start each and every day and we can bring before God those things that maybe haven't gone right, where perhaps our relationships and our actions have fallen short of the holiness of the pure God and for which we want forgiveness. But we can know that fresh start, the slate wiped completely clean every single time we come to God in confession. So let's just reflect on our past week before I share this prayer of confession together. And so we say, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God and in the knowledge of God's grace and love for us, I say for all of us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the special colic prayer for the fifth Sunday, the fourteenth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we know in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to have our reading, the first verses of Mark's Gospel, followed by Gabby introducing us to this series, and that will be followed uh, by a song for us to reflect on when we think about the Word of God and what we've heard. And then there will be the prayers of intercession and Lord's Prayer brought to us by Alison. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 15. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming out, out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. 
The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you've got a Bible, it might be helpful to have it open today because I power through this passage quite quickly and it might help you to see the verses in front of you. Um, and if you really need a bit of help, you can actually on YouTube play things a little bit slower or a little bit faster if you want, um, if you want a bit more time to think about it. Or just stop. If there's a question that I've asked and you want to think about the answer, then please just, just pause the video for a few moments when you think about it. My name is Gabby Doherty and I'm one of the ministers at St Matthew's in Kingsdown and I'm really pleased to be speaking to you today. William Barclay said that God is characteristically a God who is working his purposes out. History is not a random kaleidoscope of disconnected events. It's a process directed by the God who sees the end in the beginning. Now, as we begin a new gospel, the shortest gospel in fact, we're probably all reading things that we know already that we've read before. It's not a brand new gospel. It's not a brand new concept. These are the well-worn words of a friend and companion. Mark was probably written quite early, scholars think, because it relies on eyewitness accounts around 66 to 74 AD, they think. There's quite the discussion on which of the synoptic gospels, e.g. Matthew, Mark and Luke, came first. We're not quite sure who Mark was, but that doesn't seem to matter. Mark is not a character that's named in the book, and it's possible he could. Uh, this could have been written using Peter's teaching. Mark possibly wanted to expand and explain Peter's teaching, and this is how he did it. We think he's probably John Mark, cousin of Barnabas, but like I say, we don't know for certain. As a gospel, Mark has always been seen as lower importance than some of the other gospels, partly because of early church father Augustine, who said that Mark only followed and was an abbreviation of Matthew. So therefore, the church took Matthew as the favourite gospel and paid less attention to Mark. Mark's gospel has been seen as an evangelist gospel, but critics dispute that as they do everything, uh, because the task of an evangelist is to present the gospel clearly and compellingly, not necessarily fully or in an exact order, that it may have happened, which Mark certainly didn't do. He did. He, he does jump around a little bit. Um, Mark's aim seems to have been to give a simple account of what happened. Now, there are a few themes, the names of Jesus, discipleship, Jesus's humanity as well as divinity. What Mark wanted us to know from the very first chunk, though, chapter 1, uh, 1 to 15, uh, that this is the gospel of Jesus. And most importantly, it's summed up in 1 uh, verse 15. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So with these words ringing in our mind, let's look at the glorious introduction to Mark. Right from the beginning, Mark doesn't waste any words. He jumps right in. Mark leads us back to some old friends. The book of the books of Malachi and Isaiah, which many of the first readers would have been very familiar with, and which we too are familiar with. The quote starts with Malachi. In Malachi, it's actually used as a threat. I'll send my messenger before you and he will prepare the way. It's a bit like the old, if you kids don't behave up there, I'm coming down. Mark gets the exciting task of telling us that the Old Testament prophecies are coming true before our eyes. Isaiah spoke those words about 770 years before Mark wrote them. Malachi only wrote them about 400 years ago. But Mark can barely contain himself because that which was spoken so long ago has now come true. Mark makes it clear that Isaiah was speaking about John the Baptist as the pre-Messiah messenger. And even though John is this foretold messenger from centuries before, Mark only uses seven or eight verses to summarise the whole of John's ministry, focusing very much on the star of the show, the Lord Jesus. So we see in Mark's mind um, that John the Baptist is vital, but he's only a passing part of the story. However his message is shared, he appears in the world, he's preaching a baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sins. Although for us, John was certainly not to be ignored, he clearly had a big stage presence. What with his dramatic costume, demeanour and diet, he 
think he's the only person in the Bible who knew what they actually lived on. John lived his life as a protest. He lived in the desert, a place where he could hear God away from all the trappings of the world. He wore prophetic clothes, again, very simple, but the same as Elijah. He ate a simple diet, one he got for free. This in itself is a challenge to us. So John's telling us that he is the servant of the person that is to come. Because you would only have the person who is the lowest of the low tying your sandals. And that's how John compared himself to Jesus. We also hear that he was baptising with water. John was the one who connected us to God. It's a bit like when you phone a large company and you get the reception desk and you say, hello, can I speak to Bob Jones? And they'll say, just hold on a minute, we'll put you through. And then they put you through to the person you want to speak to. And then the receptionist fades away. That was John. He's just the compare of this dramatic story that Mark is presenting to us. And this is all done in under 10 years, in under 10 verses even. We are told what we need to know, but no more. Someone once called Mark a breathless gospel because he uses the word immediately a lot. We get this sense of pace. Mark doesn't want to waste time. It's like a child telling a story when they're upset. And then this happened, and then this happened, and then she did that, and he did that, and immediately I did this. It feels like this sermon today is a bit like this. And then this happened, and then this, life mimicking art. As I've spoken about before, about this passage, um, verses, uh, uh, chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, there are some of the only verses in the whole Bible where we see the Trinity all in one place. Father speaking affirmations over Jesus. Son, Jesus in person being baptised. Holy Spirit descending on Jesus like a dove. It's a very beautiful picture of unity. And this again is glossed over in just a few verses. This life-changing, earth-shattering moment in human history. And Mark moves on to the next bit of the story. Let's rest for a moment on Jesus' baptism. My title today was about going back to the start. And this is one of the start moments for Jesus, his baptism. He's showing that he's ready to step forward. His time has come. In verse 15, Jesus says, the time is fulfilled. Baptism for him is the start of his ministry journey. We don't often talk about the importance of baptism, but it is vital as a sign of repentance and readiness to receive Christ. Jesus was baptised even though he had nothing to repent for. But we see from this passage it was more than just symbolic. It was a glorious meeting of him and his Father and Spirit. Have you had that moment ever? Have you gone before God and surrendered yourself to him in that way? prepared to receive more of him. It's something to keep in your mind and to think over it if you're, challenged, if you're challenged by it. There was a man called David Pawson and he wrote a book um, called The Normal Christian Birth and in his book he suggested that Christians need four things to start their Christian life. They need to believe in Jesus, repent for their sin, be baptised in water and be baptised in the Holy Spirit. He suggested that in order to have a good start you needed to make sure you had all these four things. I found this really helpful in thinking about discipling people. In fact, all of these points are in the first 15 verses of Mark. We see the repentance for the forgiveness of sins, verse 4. Repent and believe, verse 15. Baptism in water, verses 4, 8, 9. And baptism in the Holy Spirit, verses 8 and 10. How is your Christian birth? Have you ticked off all four? Most of us believe. But have we repented of our past lives and selves? Have we been baptised in water and the Spirit? What is God calling us to start today? We'll have a chance to do at least three out of the four in a bit. Repent, believe and be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the start. This is where our Christian life begins. A moment of faith where we believe. A time of repentance for all that has gone before. Baptism to bury our old life firmly in the bottom of the sea. And then a supercharge to live our life with God, receiving the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to the start. How did you become a Christian? How did you learn of God's favour and love for you? Who helped you to get to know Jesus? What has this Christian life meant to you? Let's remember, if we can, the love of God that we experienced when we first got to know Jesus. How would you do things differently then to how you might do it now? What have you forgotten? that you need to remember.
What have you left behind that you should have brought with you? Have you let the love that you had for Jesus grow cold as you tried to, as you tried to serve him? You tried to follow his ways but somehow got lost on the path. Mark encourages us that this is a time to remember whom it is that we worship, whom it is that has brought us to this place. There's a catchy little phrase that people use at Christmas, Jesus is the reason for the season, but he's also the point of all this church going. If we don't remember him, then surely we're poor. If not for Jesus, then why are we here? It'd be a very weird social club to be part of, wouldn't it? You come along and you, uh, you know, you kind of... Um, you arrive and, and you sing a few little songs and you listen to someone give a little talk and you do a bit of chanting and uh, then you have a coffee and go away again. You know, I'm sure it fills a couple of hours, but it's not the point of why we're here. Jesus tells us what the point is in verse 15. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the good news that Jesus, who is God, came to earth to connect us with God. He lived a perfect life, but he was killed by senseless men who didn't know what they were doing, destroying an innocent and miraculous man. But that wasn't the end. He came back from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus, a total miracle. No one has ever raised themselves before. His life raised for eternity. That means that we too will be raised for eternity. I have a friend who, as I write this, is in their last days. In fact, Unfortunately, he's died, but fortunately, he's going to glory through Jesus' death and resurrection. Will we be joining him? Do we know for a fact where we're going? Are we clear about our salvation and who will be meeting us when we die and what they will say? If you have questions about where you're going after you die, then Alpha is the entire, the best place for you to be. And we're starting an Alpha course at the end of the month, please find out about our Alpha course. It could be totally transforming of your entire life. Today is a day to go back to the start. Let's restart our Christian lives, or perhaps for some, today is a day to restart, to start your Christian life. The God who loved his son was pleased with his son, and he also loves you and is pleased with you. Do you believe in Jesus? If so, let's declare this together and banish away the cobwebs of unbelief that lurk around our minds. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffers under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we've declared our beliefs. Let's confess our sins together. Let's repent of the paths when we turned away from God and walked on our own. Let's repent of everything in our lives that was not built on God's love and grace. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we've sinned in thought and word and deed. We haven't loved you with our whole heart. We haven't loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are. Direct what we shall be, that we may do justly. Love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we are free and fresh and clean. I can't buy, baptise you right now, although I'd love to, but please do ask if you want to be baptised. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill us and rest on us the way he rested on Jesus. This is the final piece. We just say, come Holy Spirit. We're going to pray, come Holy Spirit. And then there'll be some reflective music to listen to. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross and your resurrected life. We pray, Lord, that we too would be able to enjoy your resurrected life. And we ask you now, come Holy Spirit.
When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please will you respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Thank you, Father, that Jesus came and preached good news to us. May we turn away from cynicism and despair and believe the good news. Thank you for our leaders in church and in our nation. Please give them wisdom in their decisions and boldness and courage in carrying them out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the children being looked after by Alale. Please keep them free from COVID and may the older children continue to do well in their vocational training and then in finding jobs that are satisfying. Father, we ask that you would watch over Annie as she returns to her work with the UN in Colombia. Please keep her and her fellow workers safe from attacks of lawless people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the play group at St Matthew's at the start of this new term. May the children and staff also be kept free from COVID. Please be with them as they learn about the wonders of your creation. May they be a happy group with new children settling in quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the building committee at St Matthew's as they seek to keep the fabric of the church in a good state of repair. Please give them wisdom as they prioritise areas of work and wisdom when choosing suitable solutions. May we be willing to volunteer our time and resources when asked to, so the fabric of the church can be improved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us gather our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope you valued and enjoyed this morning's worship. There's certainly a lot in there to think about from that. Um, I shall go away from it uh, with my head and my heart full of different thoughts um, as we've thought about Mark's Gospel, as we've worshipped and as we've prayed together. And I'm now going to say a final prayer of blessing and then we will have our last song, a beautiful well-known Christian song which all starts, which starts with the words reminding us that in Christ we are made new again. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation, here in the grace of God I stand. And so a final prayer of blessing for each and every one of us as we go out into a new week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all whom you love this day and every day. Amen. So as we go out into a new week, go in peace to love and serve the Lord 
In the name of Christ. Amen. St Matthew's is a church in Kingsdown and Bristol and we love this city, we love the people of this city and we want to connect with you especially if this is your first time joining us at church. Please do send us an email if you'd like to know more about what we do or if you'd like to know more about Jesus and you don't know him already we would love to get in touch with you. Please do subscribe to this channel and find us on our website if you want to know anything more about us. Thank you so much for joining us.